For a while now, I've noticed that there's a collection of experiences I had or things I did when I was younger that no matter who I talk to, they always know exactly what I'm talking about. So I decided to pack everything I can into a video just to see how many people I can find who also share these experiences. So if you relate to any of these, drop a like. And if you can be bothered, comment which ones did and didn't apply to you too. Or just write how many out of 31 you got. Alrighty, let's go. Real quick before we start, just wanted to let you know that I have this new, very nice shirt that I'm doing a limited run of and that it's gone forever, which means it's very rare and fabulous. Link is in the description. Anyway, onto the list. Number one, those paint drawings where you scribble and then fill in the spaces with color. Number two, imagining someone running alongside the car and jumping over the obstacles. For me, this was always a Pokemon, usually a skateboarding Eevee who would collect power ups to evolve. A Fantasia squad used their fingers. Number three, Riding on the car window when it's foggy. I mean, we all still do this. Number four. You held the B button when catching a Pokemon to raise your chances. This one tends to differ depending on what rumors were spread around your school, but for me it was always that you had to hold the B button exactly on the moment the ball hits the Pokemon. That way, if it didn't work, it was because your timing was wrong instead of, you know, the fact that something like this has never been programmed into the games. Number five. When you were in a shop and you would see a bag like this. Number 6. This one's for my Nintendo DS squad. Using PictoChat and waiting for someone to come online. Spoiler, no one ever did. Number 7. That health and safety information message when you boot up a game or console. You want to read the whole thing. For fun. Number 8. Sometimes, especially in class, it would feel like time was going slower. So you'd try to cut the moment where the clock stopped. Or you'd just straight up try to stop time. Number 9. Being really curious what was inside those little presents you hung on the Christmas tree so you'd steal one only to be extremely disappointed. Number 10. Pretending you're Spider-Man on the side of the swimming pool. Also. Number 11. Trying to run really fast in water. Number 12. Rescuing ants or other small creatures. Number 13. In school you stabbed your eraser or drew on it. I have no idea why so many of us did this. I guess it felt satisfying? I don't know. Number 14. This. Number 15. This one's really scummy, but poking the meat in the supermarket. I still feel really bad about doing this, but I was super young and had basically no concept of monetary value. I feel like this is one of the rarer ones, which is a good thing because please don't do this. Number 16. Having the urge to draw on literally everything, including food. I drew on a biscuit once. Number 17. Drawing little flipbook animations in the corners of your school books. Number 18. Saying certain words in your head when you spell them, like Wednesday and be beautiful. I still do this. Number 19. Trying to outrun your own shadow. Number 20. Going to the area in a game with your favorite music and just listening to it while you do all the stuff. Number 21. Trying to catch your reflection not looking at you. Number 22. That one pencil you kept using even though it was extremely small. Number 23. Having some kind of superstitious action that you had to do. For me, this was that if you saw a lone magpie, you had to salute it or you'd have bad luck. Sometimes I'd be walking to school on my own and I'd see one and I'd be like, oh no, because it'd be really weird if I would just randomly salute. So I'd just kind of move my hand to my head and pretend to scratch my nose or something. I wasn't even really a superstitious person as a kid, it was just a just in case kind of thing. Number 24. Having a period in your life where you just had no idea how to drink out of bottles. So you drink out of them like a fish. And there was this one brand of drink that for some reason had a massive lid so you couldn't do the fish method. Number 25. Drawing with two pens at the same time and feeling like a heckin' artiste. Number 26. When your hand fell asleep and got all tingly, and it felt like you had a superpower so you tried to draw out the power and use it. Number 27. Having one of those pencils with the multiple nibs stacked on top of each other. The idea is that you could swap the nibs out with another one when they wear down, but I always lost one or more of the nibs so it wouldn't work anymore. I don't know if these are still common in school, so this might just be a nostalgia thing. Number 28. Using your pens like lightsabers and sticking them together to create a double lightsaber. Number 29. Watching TV in your head before going to sleep. Number 30. Going wah 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 on speakers to make epic remixes. 
number 31, going up the stairs on all fours. So, let me know how many you got. I got 31, obviously, because it's my list. While I was writing it, there were some more that were lingering in the back of my mind, but I couldn't quite recall them. So if there's any that you can think of that I may have missed, let me know. I love this stuff. I think it's hilarious that I can bond with someone who lives across the other side of the world over the fact that we both ruthlessly murdered our erasers in high school. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, I have a new shirt design. And it's a special shirt design because not only is it a super nice, high quality screen print, but it's only available right now, like literally only for a few more days, and then it's gone forever. I also got these cute heckin' pins if you want a little Kato for your pin collection, and a bunch of other stuff in my store. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.